I'm Michael Steckler from the Columbia University Climate School, and I've in the past been working in, in Turkey. So the, the tectonics of Turkey is such that Arabia is moving to the north and has collided with Anatolia. Um, and as a result, most of Turkey is sliding to the west along two faults, the East Anatolian Fault and the North Anatolian Fault. Uh, and that allows Turkey to move out of the way of the incoming, incoming plate. And in the North Anatolian Fault, in the 20th century, there were earthquakes along almost all of it, except near the Marmara Sea and Istanbul. But on the East Anatolian Fault, there have not been earthquakes larger than the sixes uh, for quite some time. And so this earthquake ruptured a segment of the East Anatolian Fault. Um, and the aftershocks cover about uh, a 300 kilometer zone. And then there was a second 7.5 earthquake on this East West Fault. That's a, a branch off of, of that one. And so this is the, the focal area of the damage. One thing that happens is when the earthquake happens, the ground um, not only shifts, and over here it's shifted by three meters, but the seismic waves are going back and forth and back and forth. So a building here is, is getting shifted back and forth and shaken, and then the second one happens, and it's now getting another set of, 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 of shaking, and that makes this area in the middle uh, the place that's most likely to have building collapses. A, a, a calculation for the first earthquake of how that the movement of that earthquake changed the stress on the nearby faults. So what you see is in red is where the stress has increased, making it more likely to rupture. And the blue is where the stress has been relieved and the stresses are less. And you can see that the second earthquake, 7.5, happened in an area that increased, where the stress increased, and that set off that second earthquake. We also see that there's the possibility of that other areas, adjacent areas of the East Anatolian Fault, are now slightly more likely to have an earthquake than they were before this earthquake. And uh, the uh, uh, Felix Waldhauser, I'm a seismologist at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory at Columbia University. Uh, we have been uh, looking at this earthquake and following the evolution of the sequence since the beginning in uh, the morning of Monday morning. So there was a magnitude 7.8 earthquake that started the sequence on the East Antolian Fault. And then there was a second one nine hours later, a large one, a 7.5 earthquake on a, a separate fault that sprayed off the uh, East Antolian Fault. Uh, both the first the first earthquake had about three meters of slip, so the displacement was about three meters uh, horizontally, and then this, the, the second one uh, uh, even more. Uh, the whole length of the fault that uh, uh, slipped was about two, 300 meters. So a very long uh, fault that uh, when we look in detail, so you, you're gonna move this part here over to a detailed view of the fault structures here. And we can animate the sequence uh, the way it happened in, in, in time. So the first earthquake will start here. That's a 7.8 earthquake. And then the second earthquake happened on a separate fault to the north. And you can see here the evolution in time. So we have a, a time over here in days and then we have a magnitude. So the first earthquake was a magnitude 7.8, followed by many, many uh, smaller aftershocks. And then there was a second earthquake, 7.5, that followed by many, many aftershocks. And those, those aftershocks tend to align with the fault that slipped in a main shock. 